Good afternoon, good afternoon. How's everybody doing today? As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I was reviewing on uh, spiritual encrypted encounters. I'm trying to see the comments of who's here with me. Can, uh, who do we got here? I'm doing, uh, Brother Thomas. I'm just, I'm just here relaxing, brother. Uh, now for the past week, uh, I've been feeling kind of sick. You know, even though you see me on the videos, uh, out there, uh, walking, exercising, the, the weather, I don't know, it's allergies, but for about a week now. First, it started with my shoulder about two weeks ago. You know, where I had to stop working out. I had doing Brother David, Brother Thomas. I had to stop working out because of old uh, sh uh, shoulder injury. Uh, when I was in the Army, uh, I was in the tank, and uh, we had gone into a, a hole with a tank, and they told me that we cleared the hole, so when I removed my arm from the hand I was holding, we went further into the hole, and my arm got pushed back, and I had broken my nose, you know, that's how bad of an accident it was, that I dislocated my shoulder. I hurt it pretty bad, I uh, messed up some of the tendons there, and and I had a broken nose. You know, in the military back in the day, when you're in the front line, they don't see you. They really don't, didn't take care of me, you know. Instead of sending me to the hospital to get fixed, you know, uh, they sent me to Kuwait for, for six months with a broken nose and a, and, a, and a, my shoulder, my arm was in a sling. I was a gunner. Uh, their mentality was like, oh, he's still good. You know, he, he can still pull the triggers. So, you know, when you're in the front lines, that's all they see you as, you know, they really don't take care of you. Not unless uh, they expect you to be, how should I say, invincible in a sensible way. You know, they say that you ever seen the movie Expendables? They said that everybody that's in the military is expendable. And, you know, that's how they train those those officers, you know, that we're just numbers. Basically, we're just numbers, you know, in the military. Uh, but, yeah, that's, you know, I, I had to deal with that. You know, I'm feeling better, you know. I might start working out th this coming week. But then uh, I got hit with, with allergies. When I was walking... Down that road at the beginning of the week, there was cutting grass and the allergies got me. So that's what I'm going through. Uh, here behind me, uh, you can see the minerals that I have. You know, I would like to share this with y'all uh, real quick. Uh, but for whoever hasn't seen them, you know, I'm going to switch the light over to the minerals. I still have two boxes here because I collect. That's what I do is collect minerals. Uh, it's not just about trying to find out what a dogman is or a Bigfoot is or the spiritual works I do. Um, I'm into other things, you know, like for example tonight, you know, I'm going to go dancing with my darling. We're going to dance some, some Tejano. Uh, and that's what I like to do on Saturdays. I like cardio. You know, I got to gotta keep the body moment. I ain't getting any younger. So, uh, but I want to share this with you all. For whoever is doing, if you want to send some invites out to some of your friends, you're more than welcomed. Uh... Whoever, whoever's here, uh, let, me, let me show you the, the the minerals that I got here, the specimens. This is my collection right here, of specimens that I have. So I got a bunch of minerals. Uh, and here's uh, the two boxes I'm talking to you all about that I still have down there that I haven't even, I haven't even opened up. I haven't even opened up because, like I said, I haven't been feeling too well. I have those two big boxes, uh, those two big boxes full of minerals. Uh, <clears throat> that I haven't op opened up. Yeah, what I was really thinking about, brothers and sisters, uh, where was it going? It started my own thing, uh, having my own platform. Uh, I'm really thinking about creating my own, my own site. You know, uh, maybe through Streamyard or maybe through 
through YouTube, you know, uh, and that's what I'm really thinking about, you know, I figure, uh, after going through the spiritual battle that I went through, that thank God that I overcame, because I know how I could be, for whoever has never battled spiritually or been spiritually attacked, I wouldn't wish the attack that was upon me, upon anybody, because if the individuals that are being spiritually attack, attacked don't have the wisdom and knowledge to overcome that attack, even I, when I was getting spiritually attacked, uh, anything could have happened, you know, I could not be here, right? I might not be here right now, but luckily, my faith, I maintain my faith, and, and, and I found out what I had to do to overcome my aggressors. And I'll say aggressors because it's exactly what they are. They, were, they are. You know, when people say, they call this, this is beings, they call them sh uh, uh, forest people, shadow people, that they give them gifts, and that they worship them in some kind of way, that they're friendly people. You know, people are people. People are, are in the flesh. But when you see something that's out there in spirit, I don't see how you can consider them people. Because people are people that are living and breathing. They have their flesh form and they're living and breathing. But when you're out there worshiping something that you don't understand, you know, you say that you're trying to get people to, to say, oh, they're, 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 they're shadow people. They're forest people. Well, I give them gifts. But I guess you've never been spiritually attacked. I've been spiritually attacked by this, what I called, dark shadow figures, disembodied Nephilim. Taking the the nice perspective, how people want to label them as, I take that out of the the reason I take that out of the out of the way because I know they are not friendly. I know they are not your friend. I know they are your enemy, and the reason I know that you're our enemy is because I fought them spiritually. So when people, people that maybe might practice other things, you got Wiccans, you got people that, that dabble in the, how should I say, in black magic, when they want to give these beings that kind of power is because they're really worshiping them. And they're really believing in them through worship because they know exactly what they are and they know what they are is because that's what they're part of. That's that's what they are involved in. But I'm just saying it out of the Christian side of Christian side of me, I believe in a higher power that these things that are out there, the people try to pretend to make it seem that they're friendly, they're not really your friend. They're only out for one thing. And all you gotta do is look like this. You gotta look like this. And look at your heart. Because that's what they're out for. They're out for your soul. They're out for your soul. Uh, there's been so many people that have been deceived by these unseen forces. Whether they take a shadow form or whatever they're manifesting. But that's, that's their goal. That's their goal is to try to deceive as many people as possible. How many people have committed suicide out of the blue? Huh? Because they were being oppressed by these beings. And they're not here no more. So they lost their chance. Their opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because that's what it is about. This shadow people. Forest people. I call them disembodied Nephilim. Unclean spirits. Uh, all this, this, these things. They do not have the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because that wasn't created by the heavenly father. They was created by the fallen angels, by the watchers. They don't have the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven like we do. If you, if you give the negative energies power, it's going to take it from you. It's not just going to take it from you. It's, gonna, it's not just going to take the power from you. It's going to try to bond you. And there's many people that I see uh, when I see live videos. And I see what they talk about. I see many people that are being bonded by this negative energies, considering them to be friends. You know, if a friend is not going to be there for you, set you up to, to
to take it out, you know, and if, if these people think they're friends, I'm just waiting for, you know, not unless, like I said, uh, they're involved in that and they know exactly what it is, but when you give them power like that over you, not just over you, your wrestle, your mind, your body, your spirit, at any given time, it can take you out because you done gave it that opportunity uh, to take it out. You're giving it the opportunity to take take you out. It's like being pos it's being possessed. Like uh, like I said, I was watching a video, some videos where this is this this, this female talking about. Oh, those they're, they're not evil. They're they they I gift them all the time. They're they're good. They're shadow people and they're or forest people and 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 in 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 my uh, in my uh in my culture that they exist because. You know what? I know what culture that's from. In that culture, they don't believe in God. In that culture, natives, right? Natives. In that culture, natives, there was natives that were cannibalism. So there were cannibalism in which they would also practice the black arts. The black arts, magic. You know, you got shaman. You got this shapeshifters. You got supposedly windigos from... Uh, from the from the cannibalistic, they would eat the hearts of humans. They would literally kill their enemies and eat them, or even when they were alive, you know. So I don't see where there's anything goodness coming out of that, you know, where anybody could say that if it's from something that's violent, you know, something that's in, in that nature. I don't see how you can see something good coming out of that, especially. Families being killed, disembodied, getting eaten by through cannibalism. I don't see where you see these beings that you call friendly. How can they be friendly? The only way they can be friendly is if, and not even be friendly, is that they have a hold over you. Some uh, uh, like a uh, sister. I mean, uh, sister Obama said. Obsession is possession. Believing, seeing is believing, right? So if they're manifesting themselves and they're showing you uh, themselves a certain way, right? And you're seeing it like you're seeing something and you're believing in it, then you're giving it power. So the more it shows itself to you, the more you're going to think that what you're seeing is real. But then that's when the fun begins. Because after it takes domain or power over you, then it's when when the the fun starts when it is it shows you that it's a lot more than that like i said it, it just waits for an opportunity it just needs one opportunity and the opportunity it waits for is just to see how much you're going to believe into it it sees you as a threat as it sees everybody that's here in the flesh that has a spirit as a spiritual threat because like i said they don't have the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven so they're here roaming around us to prevent us to make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's why you have so many murders, uh, deaths that are happening through violence, uh, because that's what they're doing. They're trying to prevent as many souls as possible to make it into the kingdom of heaven. If they can make something like that happen and make them into fragmented souls, and they become fragmented souls, it's, it's like uh, it'll be hard for, for them to make it into the kingdom of heaven because they're being fragmented souls through violence or through suicide from mantis to suicide or however you want to see it but that's that's exactly what's going on right now brothers and sisters in this world is an unseen spiritual war and it's been happening for a very long time yes uh, yes uh, sister you see when I initially went looking it's not that uh, that I knew what it was, I was dealing with. When I went, I went looking, is because he had lured my son into the woods when he was five years old. And for about an hour, uh, 45 minutes to an hour, I was looking for my son. I couldn't find my son. So that's why I initially started going into the woods because of what had happened. I wanted to know what is it that lured my son into the woods. And slowly but surely, I found out that there was. You know, I've always known there's been a spiritual side to everything. 
right? The spiritual realm, I've seen it, of uh, where I've been. You could say I've seen a lot of things spiritually from since I was small all the way up to now. Uh, I practiced, not practiced, but you could say because of a deal that a medicine woman saved my brother when he was small, I had to stay with her for six months. And I saw her works, I think I seen the things that she would do, uh, she would heal people, and I seen the spiritual aspect out of it. I would see this dark shadow figures, which are the disembodied Nephilim, coming out of people that were being either they were very ill, very sick, they were being spiritually oppressed, or you could say even at times demonically possessed, because I would see some of the people that it had actually already possessed them. You know, it had full control of them. So this medicine woman will heal the people and that's one of the reasons I'm making these videos to enlighten others that don't know about the spiritual aspect out of it and and I see how so many are caught up right now with that that what they're seeing they're believing that's what it's to be but you see I've seen the spiritual aspect out of it and I know what what they're seeing and what they're dealing with because I've seen it you know I've, been, I've dealt with this all my, all my life it's not it's not about me uh, buying a property I know about the spiritual aspect out of it because I've dealt with it all my life. So when I make these videos and I created my positive spiritualist, and even those who know me, before I even started doing anything with the spiritual encrypted world, they know where I come from. They know exactly who I am because I've helped them spiritually at, at the same time. I've helped them spiritually. Sorry about the dogs that are barking right now. Settle down. Uh, but yes, brothers and sisters, I'm here to to spread. And, and you know what? I've done the spiritual battles. I've done the spiritual works. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. When something wants, someone wants to discredit the spiritual aspect out of what what I'm talking about, then they don't know what they're talking about because. Just like me and you, we all have spirits, right? Our spirit has to go somewhere, just like the ones before us, or family members that have gone. Their spirits had to go somewhere, right? The the spirits continue to live, and, and that's just the way. is It's always been a spiritual battle. Uh, and what I mean by a spiritual battle is the unseen, unseen, the unseen war. I've seen it all my life. I've been being spiritually gifted to be able to see these unclean spirits that are within people you know I remember seeing them all the time my neighbor I had a neighbor that was always standing by the door he would be naked and he'd be looking at me you could see the movement of the unclean spirit that was within him in his face normally that's a, how you can ID it you know whoever is spiritually grounded and has uh, the spiritual knowledge the movement will be right here you know and it's trying to block it, when he moves like this when you move like this in your face, it's because it don't want you to see. It don't want you to see its true nature of what's afflicting the person. But just by the movement itself, that's already telling me what I'm dealing with. So when I go to the individual that's being spiritually oppressed or spiritually attacked, I tie bind and rebuke it, and I give an ultimatum but to leave. Uh, as soon as this go, it goes from this to boom, it takes off. The person that I'm pray that I've prayed for or I've I've, I've I've helped, it becomes normal, and they start talking to me. So when they become normal and they start talking to me, I ask them, "What is it? What happened? What is it? What's happening in your life that there's a spiritual opening?" Because normally when you get spiritually attacked that way, or you have a spiritual t uh, there's always a an opening of something, right? That's causing that. Uh, I remember the the gentleman I helped that was going like this. He said that. The opening he had was that he had unforgiveness. Uh, he had to forgive his father. And that's that was the attachment that was upon him, you know, the unforgiveness. So once he forgave his father, all the things that were happening to him stopped because he truly forgave him, you know, in, in true faith. You know, forgiveness is, is, is part of love. Uh, you know, when uh, we talk about cryptids, you know, they talk Mothman. I've seen so many, so many things in the spiritual realm that looks exactly like everything that people try to consider it as cryptids. Me, I call them 
demon, they're demonic creatures. You know, demonic creatures. There's a spiritual realm. You know, I like it when people when people say talk about a dimensional portal. Well, there's a spiritual realm. You know, just like when we ascend into heaven, we have to go through a spiritual realm. There's a heavenly spiritual realm. Just like there's a heavenly spiritual realm. There's a hell spiritual realm also where the the heavenly spiritual realm when the gates open from the heavenly spiritual realm, that's when the, the angels come and assist. Well, just like there's a portal there, right? A spiritual realm opening, a gate, there's one that comes from, from hell also in that manner where the demons come, the everything that's affiliated with the nativists comes through and that's the purpose. The purpose here on earth is to distract every single one of us from our opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, yes, yes, we have to protect ourselves. Uh, when I see uh, a lot of people that are out there searching in the woods, I've been out there in the woods. I'm prior military. As a matter of fact, when I thought I thought that the the dogman was real. I put all my full gear, you know, I went in there with my gear into the woods at nighttime hunting for it because if it was real, I was going to take it out because it lured my son into the woods, you know, so I, I took it as a, how should I say, as a personal vendetta in a sense of a way, you know, uh, being prior military, I was in the, in the front lines in Desert Storm, I'm trained to do that kind of work. It doesn't matter what kind of environment, if it's in the woods, if it's in the desert, if it's in the ice. I'm trained to do that kind of work. I have that mentality and that perspective in the physical way. I call it Rick on One. It's when you just focus on what you got to do and accomplish a mission. Well, I have that kind of mentality because I was prior military, fought the front lines, and I went looking for it. I went looking for it at nighttime. Numerous times, uh, the closest I got to something was it made this noise it was like i believe something small smaller like a baby one you know which i thought it was real i had the opportunity to to swing at it it with a machete and kill it but something within me told me don't don't swing at it right so as i didn't swing at it even though i could kill it because it was right there by me uh i walked away not even Four or five feet, it had made a squealing sound of some sort. I seen something coming through the woods, and we passed by each other. It would look like a solid object. It was real massive. Uh, to me, it looked like a squash. That's what it looked like to me. But when we passed by each other, it went right through me. It went right through me. Uh, in which, to me then, it, it let me know that it was actually something demonic uh, because it is 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 shadow form went right through me so as it went right through me i started feeling different i started feeling i felt its energy i felt its i guess you could see you could tell it was like trying to uh possess me in a kind some kind of way so i went did the sign of the cross and i started praying you know because of what i saw and how it brushed up against me so i guess you could say i brushed against evil i brushed like up against evil so I prayed I went to the park I sat at the park and I call in uh, call upon the Heavenly Father to come and assist me to get rid of the, the the negativity that was around me so after I sat at the park and I kept on praying and rebuking it in Jesus name it, it left me alone so you know that when, when I was gonna use a machete and whatever was squealing at me I seen it it was small it wasn't that big uh, but it came to assist it it came to assist it, but to me, you know, it's it was manifesting itself to be to look like something real, but it wasn't real. And the reason I found out it wasn't real was when the dark shadow figure, it was massive. I'm saying this 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 had to be like 14, 15 foot tall. And it was had to be like man, uh, I'm telling you how wide it was. Like ten to twelve foot wide. It was massive that it brushed up against me in the woods. And you could smell, you could smell something very strong. And it didn't, it smelled like, a, how should I say, like pestilence. It smells like, like, like sewer. It smelled real nasty, you know. So, and that rotten egg smells that people talk about, you know, something that, it smelled real nasty, you know, that, 
that it affected me. But thank God that I prayed and rebuked it and, and got that negative energy away from me. So when I talk the talk, it's not that I'm just talking spiritually. It's begin, I, I've been out there in the woods by myself at nighttime hunting this unseen force that lured my son into the woods. I mean, that was my only son, and I was I, I was just trying to cap, capture whoever lured him into the woods. Well, that's when I found out that whatever's out there wasn't what I thought it was. You know, so then it went from me have to put the how should I say the army warrior to the side because you know, like I said, I had the mentality. To, the, I have the mentality to find a target and eliminate the target. So when I found the target, and I couldn't eliminate it, and that happened to me. Then I found out that that Sergeant Seals, because I was a sergeant in the army, Sergeant Seals wasn't going to be able to t eliminate that in a physical way. That the only way it was going to be able to be eliminated was in a spiritual way. So that's where spiritual Abe is there. Spiritual Abe has always been with me since I was a kid all the way up to now. So then I had to fight this battle in a different way. Uh, when I started fighting spiritually, uh, brothers and sisters, it stopped showing itself to me. It stopped showing itself to me and then it tried to come and attack me spiritually. Uh, some of the things that would happen to me uh, when it was attacking to me spiritually, attacking me spiritually, is I could hear footsteps. Imagine you're at the park, right? You're there with Mother Nature and you're, you're training your senses, right? Training your senses. You got your eyes closed. You're listening to Mother Nature. You're, you're feeling the energy that's around you. Next thing you know, as you're doing that, you hear footsteps coming, running towards you. And by the time you open your eyes, it's too late. You go flying four or five feet, tumbling, and you get up with your guards up. You know where that's where the the spiritual guy goes into into the the warrior apes so and see us guards up, but there's nobody around. So for a couple of years there, those are the things that were happening to me. It didn't matter if it was daytime or nighttime. It was always making its presence known in the unseen way, in which it was I was being uh, spiritually attacked in that manner in which it wasn't manifesting itself so I can be to so I will be able to to see it so I can rebuke it right so it was playing those kind of games you know till one day uh, you know I would pray to God every day and I would say God why do these things continue to happen to me I have pictures I've been shoved off of two, I've been shoved off two cliffs well I got uh, the last cliff that I got shoved off from uh, I was all uh all bruised up all over my body. I was in crushes for two months. I got a pictures where I got scratches, where it was it was scratching me. I was you know attacking me, and from the attack, the the unseen spiritual attack, I would have scratches or or I would have bruises where it was making contact with me uh, through energy, right? Through energy because they're energy beings. So uh, I remember one time I was filling up some water jugs. Uh, from uh, it was a Dollar General, and I had already filled up the water jugs. And as I picked them up, it just punched me in the back. It punched me in the back so hard that I dropped on my knees. And when I looked, there was no nothing around me, but I had the big old welt where it hit me in the back. You know, uh, I could hear it running towards me, so I would stop and I'll start praying. You know, because I would have to. I had to fight spiritually. But how I overcame this, to make a long story short. Is, is I said to myself, what opening am I giving myself to this? You know, I, the, the opening was that I had already believed in what I was seeing. That's the number one. I was believing what I was seeing. The other opening was there had to be another opening for it to be able to come at me in that manner. And the other opening was that I had unforgiveness. I had to forgive people of my past that, that I had forgotten about, I had not forgiven. So I went back and every person that I could recall that I had unforgiveness, I forgave truthfully, right? So that day that I forgave truthfully was a day when they manifested and appeared in my room. They came through the walls, it was three of them, and they said that they were going to show me something, right? 
So they'll show me images, spiritual images, telepathic. Not, I, I'm not going to say telepathically. I'm just going to say spiritual images through the mind because we're all spirit. You know, sometimes when you touch somebody, you can sense their spirit or you can sense what they've gone through. So I'll say it in a spiritual way that they showed me spiritually. Images. The images that were showing me was the people that torment in Sinai. They were showing me how they have, there's people there, the spirits, the spirits that have everlasting torture where their flesh comes off, their flesh comes back on. And they were showing me the different kinds of tortures that they do there in Sinai. And uh, they told me, now that we've shown you this, you know what we're capable of doing, right? Because they showed me these pictures. So we want you to do something for us. Now I didn't say what. And they said, we want you to finish your life here on earth. So basically they came to me for me to take out my own life, right? For me to finish my life, in, in other words, through suicide. So as I looked at them, I already knew that God is a forgiving God. And I knew that when I for, forgave all those people, that that's part of love, right? So, they, and then they said, and if you don't do that, we're coming after your, your immediate family, which is my son. So this is what I told them. My son is protected by the Heavenly Father. He's his own person. Saying, as for me, I take authority over you because I know God is a forgiving God. I tie, bind, and rebuke you in Jesus' name. You're not welcome to come into my space, into my vessel, or to affect any of my loved ones. And I said, this I pray in Jesus' name. When I said that and rebuked them, they immediately left. Once they left, once they left, that was the last time that I ever got attacked spiritually by the unseen force because I, I overcame it I, I defeated that unseen force that was coming after me and it was coming at me strong but I overcame it that's why I created Positive Spiritualist which is my original site and Spiritual Encrypted Encounters I don't have most of the stuff that I had before because my account had gotten banned by Facebook, primarily banned on Facebook because I know the spiritual aspect out of it and I'm more than sure they know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who want to take the spiritual aspect out of it, take it from me. Coming from a person that's been through the spiritual battle, that's seen it in the in seen the unseen force in a flesh like form. Don't don't give power to it, guys. I'm telling you, I'm I'm being being straight up with y'all. Do not give it power over you. If you start believing in it, that's all it needs. It just needs a little opening. It just needs a little opening to come into your vessel, into your foundation. And they just don't want your foundation. If, if you're the head of your household, then it's going to come to your house and take domain in your household also. If you love your children, right? You love your children? Well, it, as it takes, it's bonding you already. Then it's going to start try to bond everybody else in the house, how? Through what is specialized, specialized in? Through fear, right? Strange things start occurring in your house in which it does that to take more power over everybody. Like I said, if somebody's hearing a knock, if somebody's hearing a growl, if somebody's hearing children playing in the middle of the night and they're getting scared, well, they're getting power, more domain over your threshold, over your household. So be careful of what you believe in or what you give a power to. Yes, they got scared and they left because I'm just here to tell you that we all have an opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Even those that are not, uh, even those that, that have not awakened, that that might still be living in sin or they're going through things in lives that maybe they might be being spiritually tested that they're going through their own testing obstacles uh, even they have an opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven because nobody's perfect nobody's perfect in this world and there's anybody says they're perfect then they're lying you know and they're full of themselves 
There's nobody perfect in this world. I'm not perfect. There's nobody perfect in this world. That's why we're here in this world. Uh, it's like a test for us. It's, everything that happens in this in this life is a test for us. Uh, and we have to learn. We have to awaken ourselves at times because if we don't have people to guide us, then it's going to be that hard for us to awaken. But I'm awakened, brothers and sisters. I'm awakened spiritually. And that's why I'm doing the works that I do. Some people might not like it. But that's on them. You know, uh, but I know when I see a person that's being bonded, I can tell. Especially if they want to give them power, give this unseen forces power by giving them gifts. Or, how should I say, uh, focused on saying negative things or talking bad about people. That's already show me that they're being bonded. Those are signs of being bonded. You know, those are signs of that individual or individuals being bonded by negativity. What is negativity? Well, you already know. The unseen force that wants to prevent you from making it into the kingdom of heaven. I'm glad that I have a couple of people here that showed up. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you are here. You know, uh, I've really been thinking about making my own site, but... I've been doing this works in this manner, like like uh, doing lives here all the time. So this how I like doing it. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot of division, uh, and even it doesn't matter what side you're on. Even in spiritual sites, there's division. Uh, it doesn't matter what side you're on. There's a lot of division because, like I said, uh, imagine how many people are being bonded right now as I speak. By a negative attachment. That as I'm speaking, they're not hearing what I'm saying. Uh, or if I show them something, they're not able to see because their spiritual gift that they, they could have is being bonded by the negativity. And it's, it's preventing them from awakening or to connect to their heart. Because love is, is part of those spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, love is the greatest gift of those spiritual gifts. That's why I always say, always maintain the love foundation. And through that love foundation, that the greatest of all gifts, all the gifts of discern discernment or senses spiritually will come automatically. Uh, but that's why it's very important to uh, maintain the love foundation at a daily basis. Uh, I've, I've seen so many different, you know, when you hear about the Mothman, you hear about the Mothman, I had encounter with something in that nature when I was six, seven years old. I'm going to share their story with you all. But the Mothman is not what you think it is. Uh, there was a day, you know, you know, in life you got people that, that do good works, and then you got people that do bad works, that they dwell in the magic and dwell in all that negativity because to them it's some kind of power, right? So they dwell in the super, they dwell in the, the sorcery of it. So, uh, there was one day, uh, my father, I was seven years old, he told me that he wanted me, he wanted to introduce me to a friend of his, that he was coming from a very long way, that he wanted me to introduce me to a friend of his. <clears throat> so I said, okay, so I'm outside, it's dark, uh, I'm sitting by a blackberry tree, you know, and I'm there, he said, sit down right here. And when he gets here, you know, I'll let you know he's here. But when he gets here, I don't want you to be afraid. He said, when he gets here, this is my father. Me and my father don't have a relationship, but I'm just going to let you know. He told me, sit down right here by this tree. When he gets here, I'm going to let you know when he's here. When you turn around, turn around real slowly, but don't get scared. That's what he told me, right? So I'm sitting there. You know when people talk about this uh, friendly... <laughs> Consider him friendly. Well, I'm sitting there by this this blackberry tree. You know, it's dark. I could see the the light from my neighbors. I could see my shadow by the wall. So I'm there, and next thing you know, I said, "Okay, he's here." Just remember what I told you. So I turned around real slow. And when I turned around, what I seen on the tree was a very big, dark figure with red eyes. 
and it was massive. It was covering the whole tree, literally covering the whole tree. It was huge, you know, uh, and I'm looking at it, and the the sense of vibe that I got of it, like I said, I've always been spiritually blessed, was not good. The My spiritual senses told me, get away from there. So I got up, and I took off running in the house, and my dad was laughing. He told me, I told you not to be afraid. Why are you running? And I just ran inside the house, you know. So over the years, they had passed by, you know. My dad's already old. He's in the 70s. He's... He's suffering, and uh, he doesn't never want to let go of the past. I brought up, I asked him, what was it you was trying to show me? What was it that you was trying to introduce me to? And he just told me, just leave it in the past. Uh, he told me, leave it in the past. Can't dwell in that. That's basically he was telling me it was something bad. So I don't know what path he was on, or if possibly he might have a attachment, a negative attachment on him that maybe the negative attachment was using him as that or whatever the case might be you know I've seen that you know what people call the moth man I've seen it like it was like, like four four feet away from me it was right behind me you know it was it was massive and and I could I could sense the energy off of it I mean they had some bigger red eyes after that the negative energy you know which to me would be a disembodied Nephilim it started staying there at our house, and my sister started seeing it. Uh, it was, you could see the red eyes through the windows. They say that, that, that my sisters, they were uh, catching people, uh, seeing through the windows, looking through the windows. You know, when you, you talk about a Bigfoot, how a Bigfoot looks through the windows. Well, it was, that's what it was doing. It was peeping through the windows, and you could see the red eyes on it. Uh, so, and uh, other things that was happening is you could hear banging on the walls where you would bang on the walls, or you was or you could hear something running on top of the on top of the house or underneath our house because our house was on pillars. You could hear banging underneath the house. So imagine imagine this: you're young, <clears throat> we all young. We're seven, seven and all, and my mother got in a little huddle and she's praying, she's praying to our father and got us all in the huddle. And what she's we're all in the huddle. You could hear bangies coming from all directions. You could hear children laughing. You could hear women laughing. It's kind of like we're being spiritually attacked by the unseen, the unseen force of the spiritual realm. Uh, my mom never wanted me to go outside, but you know I, I was never been afraid. So I, I went outside one day. I got the courage, and I went outside and I seen something by the trees that were by our home. Uh, it looked like a what people call La Lechusa. La Lechusa is supposed to be a witch that can manifest or take form into it, like a owl creature. Well, that's what I've seen. Uh, this big old bird, uh, or because she was all black, you know, so whether it was a big black bird or there was like three or four of them on the tree and you could hear them laughing as women. So I started grabbing uh, some, some rocks and throwing at them. And I was hitting them, but they wouldn't fly away. Uh, but in spite of that, uh, my, my, my grandmother, my grandmother, uh, came and she started praying and sent them away. They flew away from the trees. Uh, but I'm, I'm sharing this, this story with y'all brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm bringing it to this level in, in this manner for, for you to understand that there is a spiritual battle that happens daily. And I see a lot of people sweeping it under the rug, right? And there's many people getting caught up in the moment of of what they're seeing to be to make them think that it's reality. I'm just here to tell you that it's not uh, something that's real in the flesh and blood. That it's something that's spiritual, and it's it's like I said, its main goal is to deceive us from our opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. It's it's about it's about our, our souls. That's what it wants. It wants our souls. Every single one of us. It wants our souls. It wants to prevent us to make it into the kingdom of, uh, into the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't. It doesn't care how it, how it does it. Whether it makes people commit suicide, whether it makes people commit murder and then wind up in prison for the rest of their lives, whether uh, it, it goes against family members. You can uh, go into family members. 
they might have an opening and there'll be a, something dramatic happening, a death happen. So, so it's just planting seeds of negativity, you know. So that's what he targets on is is negativity. It it plants a seed of negativity. How many of y'all haven't had a seed of negativity since? That's have a seed of negativity that you can think about now that you're older. Something that you went through, something that shocked you, something that you gave power to when you were growing up. Well, I've had those seeds of negativity of the things that I was seeing when I was with a spiritual woman. Uh, the Just like the story I was mentioning you about how they're hitting and making sounds. Those are seeds of negativity. What are they planting? I think how you doing, uh, Brother David? Uh, what they're planting is seeds of fear, right? Why do they plant seeds of fear? Normally when we're, we're children, what do we normally do? We, we lock all our memories in a little door in a little window. We lock those memories in a little door in a little window so we can forget about it. But it's still there, right? Sooner or later throughout life, those windows that we locked up, if it's a seed of negativity, it's going to open up. And guess what's going to be there? That seed of negativity. Right, it's gonna be there, and it's gonna to try to come back and try to take domain. Start it. Uh, it's it's gonna to try to finish what it started. Right. So I know, talking spiritually, that there's many of us that might have those spiritual openings in that manner. So that's why it's very important to tie, bind, and rebuke even those negative attachments. As a matter of fact, we're 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 fixing to pray right now, brothers and sisters, because that's what I feel right now. That prayer is in, in need right now. So we're going to pray right now. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, I'd like to pray for all my brothers and sisters that are here viewing with me. Uh, for them, first of all, to maintain the love foundation at all times. Uh, we're placing spiritually heavenly crosses upon our vessels, upon us. We're placing spiritual heavenly crosses on our doorways, or on our windows, any passage away in our homes. And we're taking authority right now, Heavenly Father of any negative seeds that were planted, planted in us through childhood that we might have seen something or experienced something that till this day it bother, bother us that we have been given the power all through our lives because it was something tragic that might have happened or it was something that might have had caused us fear amongst us. We take an authority over there right now, Heavenly Father. We tie, bind, and rebuke any negative any negative seed that was planted in any kind of way and we're just letting know the negativity that planted in it we're taking authority over you in Jesus name we tie by and rebuke you you're not allowed to to follow to do anything to any of us or our next of kin they are being protected also by the Heavenly Father as we are placing spiritual uh, heavenly crosses upon them at this time uh, we tie by and rebuke you uh, send your heavenly angels, Heavenly Father, to clean sweep our, our households, our vessel, our households. Clean sweep and get rid of any negative attachments or any negative, anything negative, anything that's trying to affect our lives uh, at a daily basis. We're, you're not welcome at all. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, brothers and sisters, uh, I haven't been feeling well. But, you know, I know how that works sometimes spiritually. You know, as you're trying to send a spiritual message, there's always spiritual interference. Uh, but I had to, you know, I had to do this. I know Brother Carlito is going to go live pretty soon. Uh, you know who Brother Carlito is. Uh, he's part of Cryptid and Paranormal. He's going to do live at 8 o'clock tonight. I told him I wanted to do live. I wanted to do it my own way, you know, because... Sometimes that's all you have to do, you know, is you just, just, just let it all out, you know, without interference. And uh, everybody that's here viewing, I will answer your comments back. I just, I'm just glad that y'all join me. You know, sometimes when the Spirit talks, brothers and sisters, you just have to let it flow and let it go out how it's coming. Because when it happens that way, so I'm even get, getting goosebumps right now. When it happens that way, brothers and sisters, it's because... Is, is is being sent from the heavenly heavenly Father uh, using uses us, uh, me, you, as 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 vessels as a messenger, or, or uses us in that manner. And I I'm be, I'm obedient of what I'm being shown what to do. Uh, having been blessed 
to overcome an unseen spiritual war, a spiritual attack, I overcame that. And also after that, I overcame, I got blessed to come back to my body because I had crossed over. Uh, that's a different, uh, another story I'll share with you next time of what happened to me. I got blessed to come back to my vessel by the Heavenly Father. You know, of what I understand, I was clinically dead by the nurses, the RNs over there. Uh, the doctor got so scared that when he see me alive that he ran out of the room. And I was told I was going to be there for two weeks to let me go the following day in very bad condition. But I overcame that, you know, the, the spiritual warrior in me. And uh, what I was taught was to never give up. So I knew that for me getting to 100% was going to be a task. But I know with God on my side that just like I overcame that unseen spiritual world that I was going to be able to overcome uh, my situation. Uh, what almost uh, got rid of me out of this world was a, a blood clot on my left leg. There was so many. They say they never seen something that big. Uh, but that's what happens, I guess it's some kind of mortis when when your body shuts down and it starts dying, right? Your 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 blood starts coagulating and it gets hard. But I came back because I got blessed to come back into my vessel. And to this day, I still fight. And I've never forgotten what the Heavenly Father has done for me. And that's why I talk spiritually because I know He exists and for those who say or make the, the, the Heavenly Father jokes, they don't know what, what they're talking about. And to me, it's not that they know what they're talking about, it's just being bonded, you know. They're, those, are the, those are the people I'm talking about, that they're, they're being bonded. They don't know the, the, heavenly, the works the Heavenly Father does. I've seen the miraculous works. I'm a walking example of that. And I've, I've helped up people in that manner, that they became miracles by going and praying for, for them, uh, in locations like in icier rooms, literally complete stranger. The, uh, I remember that this this stranger. I was sitting. I was I was in a, an emergency room because my brother-in-law had got in an accident. And he was in the icier room. He was. They put him in a coma-like state. So I seen a little girl crying. And she was crying, and I said, "What's the matter?" She's like, "My father. My father is, is fixing to die." And she was crying, and she was like, "I don't want him to die." She was crying, you know. So okay, and I told her, "Can you take me to where your father is?" So I went over there, she took me and she pointed to the room, there was a priest, a Catholic priest was giving him his last rites. Uh, the doctors had given him like 30 minutes to live, you know, 30 minutes to live. Because uh, he had uh, his liver, his liver was almost completely gone. So I gave him like 30 minutes to live, so I go in there and I ask him a question. I look at him and I ask him, if, if I were to tell you something, would you do it? So for you to, to continue to live. And he said, depends what it is. So what if I were to tell you that if you repent for your sins right now and you ask God for forgiveness, that God can intervene in your situation right now and you can continue to live in spite of what the doctors have told you, would you do it? But when you do it, you have to do it in true faith and true belief. And he started crying. He said, yes, yes, I will do it. I will do it in true faith and, be and true belief. Listen to me. I told him, I'll tell you one more time. In true faith and belief, and you're the only one that can do it. I can guide you to it, but you're the only one that can do it. So I blessed him with heavenly crosses from head to toe all throughout his body with some uh, holy water that I had. And I started praying for him. You know, I gave him 30 minutes to live. You know, imagine doctors and you got the priest already. The priest had already given you your last rites, and you got 30 minutes to live. Well, that's when I came in spiritually. And I prayed for him, and, and I said for the Heavenly Father to use him as an example of how miraculous, how great he is spiritually, and to use him as a walking example of his miraculous works. So I finished doing my prayer, and I walked out of that room. The little girl, I went out there, and the little girl went back out there into the, into the area, they were just looking at me. The family members were looking at me. Ten minutes later, doctors were running around by the ice room like chickens with their head cut off. And they're looking at the charts. And they're saying, there's no way. There's no way in the world. There's no medical way in the world that this could happen. No way. It's impossible. What happened, brothers and sisters, is 
he got a new organ. Came out of telling you the Heavenly Father is real. His liver that was damaged became renewed. He had a new organ in his body that came out of nowhere. This man walked out of his room after the 30, he walked, literally walked out of the room, healed, out of the ICU room. And the doctors, there was like six, seven doctors, they didn't know, they couldn't find a scientific way to explain what happened. He got blessed to stay in this world and he was going to, I know for a fact that he's being used as a vessel as a vessel because how God blessed him to stay in this living that he's being used in a as a vessel in this world to send positive messages just like I'm in this world sending positive messages uh, positive messages and sharing my stories uh, to awaken people about how great the Heavenly Father is yes it, it exists you know uh, and for those that you know, I know there's some people that are cut up here in this world because they really haven't gone through something dramatic to to for them to have to go kneel down and, and go into prayer, especially if something that's happening to their body. But maybe one day when they do have something like that happen to them, that they might open up themselves uh, to to get healed. Uh, there was a, another time, brothers and sisters, where. I had seen uh, in my dream. I seen uh, I was gonna. I was gonna. In my dream, the heavenly Father showed me I was gonna meet a man, and where I was gonna meet this man was gonna be at the at the VA hospital, and he gave me orders that when I meet this man, when I go to him, to let him know that he want the heavenly Father wanted him to open up his heart to him, so he could come in and heal him. Right. So <clears throat> I had gone to a VA appointment. And the same man that I seen in my dream, I seen him sitting down on the sitting down on the chair. So I went up to him and I looked at him. I said, "Sir, uh, I don't know if you're a spiritual guy or nothing like that, but I'm here to give you a message." And he's looking at me. He said, "What's a message?" And I said, "The Heavenly Father wants me to tell you that you can still make it. That you can still be alive. That He can heal you, but that you have to open up your heart." And let him in. He looked at me and he said, I don't believe in God. I'm a, he said, I'm a Satanist. And he said, fuck the Heavenly Father. That's what he said. I said, he said he can heal you. He just wants you to open up to him. Which it means, you open up to him, you have to change your ways. You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to repent. And then he said, no, I'll, I'll stick being faithless. Right? Following week, I went back. Following week, I went back. There was two females that I met, and they said they were there because of the father had died. And I said, well, "What was the matter with your father?" And he had cancer, right? So their father was the person I had talked to, and that was telling me, you know, how he was as an individual and stuff like that. So, they, and they had said his name, uh, and he even showed me a picture of him. So I crossed paths with both family members, and I, and, I, and I told them the same thing I told them about opening up their hearts to to the Heavenly Father, that He can make things happen. And if they ever feel a certain way, you know, I, I send my message to them also. But that's not what it is sometimes, people. Uh, that some people are, are bonded so so badly, or maybe they, isn't, that's all they know, or maybe that's what they were shown to them. You know, like I said, you know, talking about negative seeds that was planted to them a long time ago. You know, uh, it happens that way. But I've seen the miracles of the Heavenly Father. They're amazing, brothers and sisters. I, I'm going to share a spiritual battle. Where was the view when you're here going to view this one? A spiritual battle that I witnessed with my own eyes because <clears throat> what happened to me when I was walking at night, I was walking at night going towards the airport and I feel something overcoming. My senses just kicked in, right? I see this giant red mass orbs there were there were not orbs there were just red mass big old red masses circular uh big masses that were like 14 to 15 foot tall 
and they were coming from t uh, two directions towards me, like they were trying to ambush me. You know, they were gonna, they were coming to me from side to side, and as they were coming to me, I, I seen them getting closer and closer. So I just stood still, and I called upon the Heavenly Father to assist me, to to send His angels to come and assist me. Then what I witnessed was two giant blue orbs come from different directions. As it came from different directions, they rammed into the red mass form, and the red mass form got scattered into little pieces. And the two big blue orbs went back up into the heavens. I witnessed a spiritual battle. You see, I know that I wasn't going to be able to deal with it by myself spiritually because they manifested themselves into a red mass, but I knew that I wasn't alone, that I'm just like you should be, you should know that you're never alone. It's not always about the I factor, it's about the He factor, the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is always with you. You know, sometimes when you're placed in a situation like there, there's things that come into factor, right? Fear, you start seeing things that you've never seen before. Fear tries to distract you up here, what you're supposed to do spiritually. But not me, that day, I knew what I had to do. I called upon the Heavenly Father to come and intervene and assist me spiritually. And guess what? When you, you're praying in true faith and true belief, He came and assisted. He sent His heavenly angels to fight these big old red masses and they scatter into little pieces. Uh, I have so many short stories that I can share with y'all brothers and sisters, but uh, I'm making this video because I felt that uh, I need to touch and base, touch with people. Y'all see my pictures. A lot of the pictures that I have were some of them were screenshots from old videos that don't exist no more because, like I said, my my Facebook account had got permanently banned. But in those screenshots was why I'm, I'm, why I'm sharing the screenshots is because that was when I was in the midst of the spiritual attack or spiritual battle I was going through back in 2014 and 2015. The reason I'm sharing it with y'all is because within those pictures you can see images of these unseen forces. Basically, I'm calling them, I'm, I'm putting them out there with blast. So you can understand that that is what you might see out there is not in the flesh. It's a spirit. That's why you can see some of them where they're trying to take form of something that might look beastly. But this is dealing with the, the spiritual side of it, the spiritual aspect out of it. And I know some people want uh, these creatures to be real, to you know, to cre uh, they they create so many different uh, how should I say perspectives or angles of how they could be real, whether it's through DNA, through whether it's through bloodline, whether it's through different variants of uh, Bigfoots or dogmans. Uh, but I'm just here to say that biblically. These creatures, they're called disembodied Nephilim. They can, they, they're, they're part angel. They can manifest and take into this, they, they can manifest and take forms into different shapes. So, my videos of those screenshots is my evidence to y'all that this be, these beings are spiritual. And for you not to be deceived, right, of getting it power. Because if you give it power, it's going to take that little bit of opening to come up up against you spiritually. Uh, so do not give it power what you're actually seeing. And you know what? Put it to a test. Put it to a test just like I did. When you see something like that, tie, bind, and rebuke it in Jesus' name. If it disappears in thin air, then you know what you were seeing was not flesh and blood. What you were actually seeing was something that was an un unseen unclean force, right? Whether it be demonic or disembodied Nephilim, you know, which it comes from the same. That's why you tie by and rebuke it. Put it to the test. Maintain your love foundation, right? Maintain your faith and put it to a test. Tie and and rebuke it in Jesus' name. But you see, if you've, this way is, is you have to be careful. If you've given it too much power, right? Too much power by believing that it's something real, then it might have one over you already. So if you try to fight it in that manner spiritually, then it's 
it's got one up on you, it's going to come at you. So you have to be very careful. That's why I would say, be careful what you give power to. You know, just like, uh, like I said, the the woman saying uh, that they're friendly, that she gives them gifts and all this stuff. Oh my God, you, you just don't know what you're, you're giving power to. Imagine, I know for a fact that if I were to go to this woman and I would pray spiritually for her and I would tie by the rebuke the negative attachments that are upon her, that if we were to record it, you'll be able to see the negative attachments departing her body because she's being bonded by these negative energies. And she's being used as a vessel to try to deceive people by giving, it, giving them gifts. You know, giving them gifts is like a sacrifice. It's like you're giving it a gift. It's like uh, you. It's like you're believing in it. You know, and you're gonna give it power uh, over you, over your soul. But I know that I can help this woman out, and I, I think she know she needs a lot of prayer. But I can help her get rid of the negative attachments that are upon her. You know, it's not gonna. It's not gonna mess with somebody that it already has, that it's already got bonded. It's not going to waste its time with somebody that it's got bonded because it's already got them where it wants them. It's going to mess with somebody that sees them as a threat, as a spiritual threat that they know exactly, for example, like me, you know, what I had to, I had to fight spiritually because he knew that I knew what I was dealing with. But, you know, when I... The sergeant see us of me went out there for the hunt. I gave it a little bit of opening thinking it was real. So that's why I had to take all that back. Take my power I gave over it back. And take authority over it. By, by fighting spiritually. And rebuking it in Jesus name. And you know you see my pictures. You know if I look at all the pictures I have on, on uh, spiritual and crypto encounters. You can see it if you're spiritually inclined, you'll be able to see the figures there without me having to put no fake eyes or circle anything around. They're right there. You know, just they're there in spirit form. They're not there in the flesh. Just like I see a lot of pictures of other people. You could tell they're not there in the flesh. You could tell they're in spirit form. You know, for whoever's spiritually inclined and believes in a higher power and has seen, for example, a ghost uh, somewhere along their lives or their experience of something paranormal you know what I'm talking about look they can man manifest in into many things uh, when I was in the army I was in uh, in uh, back in I went back I was in Desert Storm but I went back in 95 to guard the the, <clears throat> the border the Kuwait border I, I got into a spiritual altercation out there with the gen. Uh, we had a uh, a fire where we would burn uh, or trash at nighttime. Well, the gens, the gens, it was more than one. They decided to show up there and they would stand by the fire to get the energy of the fire, right? So you could see them standing there. They looked drawer like with the hoods and everything. You could see the gen over there. So I would just do the sign of the cross and I would pray, you know, because. My chain of command wouldn't believe if I were to tell them what I'm seeing out there, you know, because in the army, you train only to be a certain way. They don't want to see the spiritual side of you. They just want to see the, that, uh, hurrah, the, the hardcore part of you, of, uh, being reckoned and accomplishing a mission, right? They want you to be a warrior. They don't want to see the spiritual side of, of you. So I would see this. I really wouldn't tell nobody about it. So, you know, I would just, protect myself, you know, and forever I talked to my crew about what was happening, what I was seeing, and I even showed them, and they seen it, and they started wearing rosaries from the from the priest and stuff like that because they were getting spiritually attacked too. What's happening is they were coming to our tank, they'll come up, with, mess with us when we're asleep, uh, they'll put the, put weight on our necks, neck areas, they'll pull our sleeping bags, they'll pull us off the cots, off the sleeping bags, you know, we have night vision, and we'll be able to see, you know, so, after so many different times that that happened, you know, we had the, the night visions on standby, ready to see if there was somebody playing a prank, but 
there was nobody there playing a prank, you know. This, uh, this, this, uh, Jen, they were like playing games, and it never manifested itself to me in its, in its form, because I was, if it would have, I would have rebuked it in Jesus' name. So I was just glad to leave that area. It, it was pretty horrendous. The I was there for uh, three, four months, and it was horrendous. All the time I was there, it was like every night the same thing was, was happening in that area. But the jinn also exists, and, and to me, it calls, it's all coming from the same area. You know, the same disembodied Ephraim, you know. They, did, they looked a little bit different than the shadow figures, but the shadow figures that I've seen in the Old Grove look the same as a jinn. You know, uh, people people could say, well, how would the jinn make it into the United States? I'm going to tell you how. The jinn, I'm going to tell you how. Attaching themselves, it's going to sound crazy to y'all, but I won't tell you. How is the jinn in the United States right now? You see all the chaos and havoc happening, right? How, how could the jinn come to the United States? It's simple. I'm going to tell you how. You know, that region, that's where the jinn region is. Through attaching itself to American soldiers. That's how. They're coming back into the United States through our soldiers that it has attached itself to. That's how it's coming into the United States. That's how the gen is, 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 is coming into the United States through our soldiers. Through, through the soldiers that have been out there in combat, that have seen something, that have taken a life, the negative attachment is coming through them into the United States. Killeen, Texas, right? Killeen, Texas is where I used to live. Well, Killeen, Texas, the biggest army base is Fort Hood, Texas, right? It's there, Killeen, Texas. There's been a lot of death and more murders in Killeen, Texas. And I believe it has to do with that. The gen from the soldiers that are coming from over there. You hear all this violence, deaths. Of uh, soldiers killing soldiers. Uh, prime example, the, the 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 female Guian, right? What happened to her? How she got murdered? She got literally dismembered, right? It's but that th those people have attachments. They don't even know they have attachments. The guy that did it, he killed himself. What does that mean? He killed himself. That's one one more soul game for the enemy, right? It's about making it to the kingdom. It's one less soul, make one less soul to worry about. What happened to uh, Sister Gideon? She became a fragmented soul. What happened to her? But those are the things the military don't talk about. This unseen forces that you know they want to call it PTSD. No, it's a lot more in depth than that than PTSD. It's a spiritual battle, a spiritual war, and it's happening at a daily basis. Uh. I'm just trying to enlighten you all in here, brothers and sisters, to bring this perspective that if you talk to somebody that lives in Killeen, they'll let you know <clears throat> there's strange things that are happening there that they don't know why, they don't know how it's happening, but there's a lot of people killing each other over there right now. I have family that lives in Killeen because that's where I used to be from, <clears throat> but even then there are cars that are going out there, but it's happening. Is out there. I believe in that area where uh, I was. There was there was soldiers that were coming from Iraq where, where I used to live. That maybe it's possibly that the jinn was attached to these individuals. Uh, matter of fact, I knew one that I was trying to help. Uh, he was married to a, a, my friend's daughter, and uh, he was being spiritually attacked by a jinn uh, that was attached to him. Uh, I tried to help him out, and then one day. You know, I was trying to help him out spiritually. One day he came to my house with a loaded shotgun. And he was loading up the rounds looking at me. And he said he was afraid of death. And I said, no, I'm not afraid of death because God is with me. And he had loaded, loaded up his, his, his shotgun. He put it on fire and he pointed it at me. And I just told him, if you don't want to lose your birthright into the kingdom of heaven, don't pull that trigger because you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. But even that... If you try to pull that trigger, I know God is with me. And he's not going to let you pull that trigger. 
Well, he didn't get to pull that trigger. But what happened after that, he got divorced from uh, my friend's daughter. And uh, he remained with that spiritual attachment on him. Uh, the, the, his eyes were always black. And he was always talking about different demons and stuff like this. He was really spiritual. I tried to help him out, but he didn't want. <clears throat> he he wasn't the type of person to open up spiritually. So, as far as I know, he remained bonded in that nature. Yes. Uh, also, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I talked about that earlier, Carlito, how I was, I was, see, there's another side of me, and maybe one day I'll introduce you to the side of me, which was the side I spent 10 years in the military, it's named Sarncias. Sarncias was hardcore, uh, this is spiritual Abe, uh, you know, I distanced myself from the army, and I found my way how I'm truly supposed to be, uh, awakened, but Sarncias was hardcore, and Sarncias was upset. Uh, because my, his son had got alerted to the woods, so he went on the hunt for these things, and he was just put it this way: I had the equipment where I went, and I caught in the military is called black mode, dark mode. You go in dark mode. Dark mode means no lights. Dark mode is you go into an area with no kind of lights, and you're in the darkness with darkness. You're you become darkness. So I was in dark mode searching for whatever lured my son into the woods to see if I was he would get close enough to me to brush up against me because I thought it was something real right that I was a I had I had things that I, could, I had on me to be able to eliminate the target I had some knives I had some machetes and I know where I was gonna aim for you know uh, and it was because he lured my son into the woods, so I, I hold it personal. I, I, and I know what I was going to do, what my, my goal was. Uh, but it never manifested itself to me uh, when I was hunting for it. But I ran into one. I was, I w what I would do is I would become part of Mother Nature. I'll go hide behind bushes, behind trees, just to see if I see any kind of movement. You know, Matter of fact, I even had a mask that was dark. So I could blend in with the darkness, uh, and I'll be searching to see if I could see the things. This is before I had my encounter with the sixth dog man. Uh, so I would look and I search. Then one day I was by by, by a tree, and as soon as I got into the tree and I, and I and I you know was camouflaging as myself with the tree, I heard this loud squeal or something. I looked down to my left and I seen something there looking at me. He had his mouth open, he had a lot of teeth. I don't know what it was. All I know is I had my machete in my hand and all I had to do is take a swing because I was that close to it. He swing downward and make contact with it with the blade of the machete. But something within me told me, don't do it. You know, something with me told me, don't do it. So I put my put my blade away, my machete, and I walked out of the, the tree lines, out of the woods. As I was walking away, it's when I seen, what it, when, he, when he was crying, I guess it was a call for help. So that's when, when I seen it, when I seen this big old ba uh, black mass coming into the wood line as I was going out into the wood line. It was coming from the highway, and I was going into the highway where there was, it was lighter. So it burst up against me. As it burst up against me, uh, I felt the spirit it was more of a spirit because it didn't hit me I didn't feel an impact like contact like this it, it went right through me you know like I was telling you earlier and I felt like it was trying to take over me in some kind of way that's why I had, had to go to the park to pray uh, for the Heavenly Father to send assistance because I made contact with the negative energy but it came to assist whatever made the squealing sound <clears throat> that's why uh, you have to be careful what you seek for. See, I was seeking, seeking, seeking it out to eliminate it, because, I mean, when you hear all this 
missing 401 cases of children disappearing, right? Who's done anything about that for the children that have disappeared in the woods? Who's fought that, who's fought that battle for those children? Well, I was trying to fight the battle for my son when he got lured into the woods. Because imagine if another 15, 20 more minutes would have passed by. Maybe my son would not be here no more. So that's why I went searching to find out what lured my son into the woods. And it got me into all this, the positive spiritualist thing and the spiritual encrypted encounters. And that's why I make these videos to share the story with you all that it's not just about a spiritual aid. There's a, another side of me, Sarcius, a wreck on one, uh, been out there where we laze and blaze and we, we identify our targets and we destroy our targets, right? So I've done that. I'm just saying that this unseen force that we're dealing with, you cannot eliminate it like that, like Sergeant Sias would do in the army against targets. The only way you can eliminate it, eliminate it or get it out of your picture, maybe temporarily, is by rebuking it through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And that's what I found out. The machete couldn't do nothing against it. The knife couldn't do nothing against it. So this, no matter what kind of arsenal you got, no matter what kind of arsenal you got, and trust me, I know about arsenal. Like I said, I was in the military. We had we could shoot a target from 3,000 meters with a tank and get a direct hit. Doesn't matter what kind of arsenal you had, if it's in spirit, you're not going to be able to do nothing to it. The only way you're going to be able to fight something that is in spirit is spiritually through prayer, tie bind and rebuke it, and it becomes a constant battle of that nature. Yes, the sister Lori Barnes. <clears throat> there was one day where my son uh, and uh, my, my friend's daughter were playing at the swing at the slides at the park. This is before I even had my encounters and all the stories that I'm sharing with you. Uh, and I was showing her the creek. I had barely moved into that area, and I, I felt that it was going to be a good place for for my son to to live because there was a swimming pool, there was a park, two two parks within the the mobile home park, and he could go play, you know. And I could go out there with him, push him on the swings, and see him going down the slide, going the merry go round. Well, I went to show my friend uh, the creek that was there, and as we were by the creek, uh, we could still hear him playing on the on the slides. And as I'm we're just looking at the creek and we're seeing the water there. We don't hear them no more. So we go out of the, the little bit of wood line that was there. It was probably, we're, we're probably like four feet in there or five feet into where the woods were to the creek. We were at the narrow part of it where there wasn't too much trees. And when we went out there, we couldn't find my, my, my son or her, her daughter. So we were yelling for their names and we searched that side where they were playing. We went to the opposite side of the park to maybe if, see if they went over there and we couldn't find them so we, I went back to my house we went there and I talked to my sister and asked my sister if they were there in the room playing video games at that time I, I think I had a Sega Genesis and a Nintendo 64 <clears throat> and uh because he liked playing those games and I figured that he had taken her there to play so we went there looking at the, at the room and there wasn't there, you know, so I really started getting worried there. 30 minutes had already passed by, you know, as we were searching for him. So then my sister got scared, and we all started searching for him. We went back to the woods, uh, I mean, to the, the park, and we're looking, and she said, you know what, we're going to, we're fixing to call the cops, you know, something happened, they're, they're not here. You know, somebody, you know, somebody might have taken them. So they left towards the house, they were fixing to call the cops. And I started praying to God, you know, I started praying to God. I said, God, please help me, guide me to my son. And as I turned around, I seen something. I seen just the top, he was a tall boy. I just seen the very little bit top of his hair. That's all I seen. The top of his hair behind a, behind a bush. And I took up running. I said, son, son, you know, ran into the wood line. And both of them were standing side by side each other. They were standing side by side each other. Uh, they were they were standing side side by side each other. As they were standing side by side each other, 
uh, I asked them, I asked both of them, what are y'all doing in here? And they were standing there like a trance-like state. They wouldn't say nothing to me. They were just standing side by side. They were holding hands, just standing side by side, just like this in a trance-like state. I said, son, what are you doing here? He wouldn't re respond to me. Then, then finally he said, this is what he said. Both of them said this. They said, the black man called us in here. That's what they said. The black man called us in here. So I grabbed them and I yelled, hey, I found them, I found them. They came running. And I told them, take them. Take them to the house, you know. So they took them to the house. And I started searching the woods to see if I could see, you know, somebody maybe wearing, wearing black or this black man. They said the black man or maybe an African-American. So I searched the woods. I went to the creek. I went to the bridge. I went to the highway. I searched it all over the place. I didn't see nobody that fit that description. Uh, following day, following day, I told my friend to bring her camcorder and to to have it on because we're gonna go in there to see if we find this man in black that they were talking about that lured him into the woods, and if we could catch him on video. That if we caught him a video, that we can give him to the his his face to the police, saying that he lured our sons into the woods, or or son and daughter into the woods, right? That he was trying to take them. So I went in there the following day, and as soon as I went into that path, that was the first time I had gone into that, like one of the first times I really went into that path. Uh, she had the camcorder. We walked about four, five, six feet, and I just my friend was behind me, and I was just seeing and sensing to see what I could see. And all she said is, oh my God, I think I caught something. And she turned around and she went running out of the woods. Right? So we went back to her house to get away from Elm's Grove. And I was reviewing the video. And on the video, when she said, oh my God, I think I caught something. You could see on the video where something was looking at us. And it was, um, it was something dark. But it looked like it was made out of Mother Nature itself. It had an amulet around its neck. And it went straight down into the ground. Straight into the ground. That's why you caught on the video. So, I was trying to get that video from her. See if she still had that the evidence. And she she got scared. The, the And she got rid of the evidence. The reason she got rid of the evidence is because after what had happened over there with her daughter, things started happening to her at her home and things were still happening to my home. So I had to pray for both of our children. I had to pray for my son and I had to pray for her daughter. Uh, my son, I, he was being spiritually attacked. So I had to put him in prayer and I rebuked the, the negative attachment, whatever tried to attach itself to him from the woods. And I did the same thing for her daughter. So... When people say that how do our children disappearing, well, there's unseen spirits or unclean spirits. They have the the abilities to to manipulate anybody, like puppets. If they can find an opening, you know, if it it showed themselves to them as a man in black, well, they're thinking it's something real because they're only kids, right? So in some kind of way, it's getting power over them. So all he's got to say is, well, follow me. You know, I want to show you something. Follow me. Come with me. And I believe that's how a lot of the children, uh, uh, 401 cases that are missing, that's how they, they disappear into the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm that I'm talking about, they're disappearing to is the demonic spiritual realm, that they're being held captive. It's all about the souls, right? They're being, they're being held captive. That's why they disappear completely, you know. If they can get them to to submit 100% to believe in me, well, that's how they can take not just the soul but the vessel. Take them completely out of the equation. Take them into their dimension or, should I say, their spiritual realm. Or that's how they, 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 they wind up missing. Yes, yeah, so I'm telling you... Uh, Wherever you're viewing, and uh, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm glad. Wherever you're viewing, uh, uh, my, my buddy Carlito, uh, Cryptic uh, Paranormal Kid, is going to have a show this evening. I just wanted to share my insight 
of above all of this, and I have so much other knowledge I want to I, I have to share with y'all. Uh, I'm just I'm just speaking right now from the heart, brothers and sisters, because I worry about many people right now, and I could see, you know, like spiritually, I could see the ones that have those negative attachments. I could literally see them. Even when they do the lives, they're doing their lives here on uh, on Facebook. You can see that they have the negative attachments. I try to reach out to them and try to, hey, do you want to pray? Or can we do this? Because I see that they have a negative attachment upon them. And the the negative attachment got a strong hold on them. You know, you see it happen all the time. Uh, especially when, when you have to make a, a live and you bash on people. You have to have find somebody to bash on or make fun of. You know that's not right. Or and I, I can see where there's a lot of people that are being bonded where they're giving it power and they're using other people. It uses using people that it that it has uh, a, a strong hold on them and they're using it is using them as vessels to to lie to you to say that they're your, that you're, that your friends to gift them something. You're not gonna, you're not gonna invite a vampire in your house, are you? If there's such thing as a vampire, or a, it's an energy vampire, I know there's succubus and incubus. It, you're not gonna invite them in your house. If you're inviting your house. You already know what's gonna happen. So why would you gift, all right? Gift a, a disembodied nephilim, or gift a forest people, what they call them, or shadow people. When they're about negativity, what would you want to give something or give something power over you in that manner? And there's a lot of people that I hear talking about they're friendly and all this this stuff. No, they're not friendly. Trust me, I fought them spiritually. And and I see those people whether they're being bonded or whether that's what they're about, and that's what the works are. Just like I'm doing the works of sending a positive message, of how to overcome them. There's people that are doing the works of how to trap you. How it doing works for them to trap you into bondage. That's what they're doing. If you really think about it, they're doing the works to trap you more into bondage. That's exactly what they're doing. And they're playing it off. Oh, they're friendly. They're friendly. But they're, the, the works that they're doing is getting you to, <clears throat> to believe that they're friendly so it can bond you even more is using them as a vessel right to put that message out there to make you think that they're friendly that they're friendly why, why? to bond you you see it you see it happening all the times on, on uh, here on the sites on crypto sites where there's people that, that consider this these dark shadow figures friendly. They they gift them things. They build them little homes. Imagine how much bondage those individuals have over them. How much this unseen this unclean spirits have control over them that they use them in that way. I wouldn't mind sitting down with any of those people. As a matter of fact, for any people that consider them friendly you're more than welcome to contact me or messenger and we're going to see how friendly they are because when we talk to the messenger we're going to pray we're going to pray or if you want to meet me in person we can talk we can pray about this we'll put it to a test we're going to find out how friendly they really are we're going to put it to test but i know one thing after I'm, I'm said and done with my prayer and my spiritual works, that you're going to feel a lot different. And you're going to be able to think better for yourself, but you're going to feel a lot different because the negative attachment will be gone from you. It will not be able to confuse you or bond you anymore. I know that this for a fact. Yes, there's a lot of generational curses. There is, there's Bigfoots, there's Dogmen, there's Mothmen, there's Goatmen, there's uh, 
boy, gargoyles, there's succubus, incubus, there's gypsy women that can, they talk about werewolves, uh, how they can manifest, but it is all dealing with one thing, there's all those things, even the things of the pharaohs, there's one thing they all have in common, that connects every single one of them together in some kind of way, shape or form, with sorcery, black magic, that's a connection. So what happens if there's black magic uh, or that in play? What comes in when there's black magic and things like that in play? The negative energies, right? Negative attachments, the demonic forces that manifest in that nature. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, uh, Sister Bama. Uh, I've been, I've been. Uh, for those who know me, I've, I've done other works in Light Workers Light Phase, Light Workers of the World. That's why a lot of people know me when I was doing my spiritual works before, before my son had the things that happened to my son, and then uh, when I made the show with uh, Mr. Vic Kundov, that's that's what uh, got me to go into the spiritual encrypted side of it, you know, because. I've always felt that what I was dealing with was a demonic force that it was using everything in its arsenal to come up against you spiritually, right? I mean, it's manifesting itself into a, uh, a spiritual, into a spiritual, it's manifesting itself to look real. So it was trying to deceive me, you know, those are the tricks that anything demonic plays, you know, it tries to deceive you, that's what it's about, it's a trickster. But yes, there's a lot of researchers that might not say that might not believe what I'm saying, but I can take them to the locations that I've, I've had an open, open image. I've had an open image. Settle down, Rocky. Settle down. I've had an open invitation there for a while for all these people that don't believe that what I'm saying is the truth. I've had an open invitation to take them to that area in Elms Grove Estates. To, to show them that what they're 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 seeing is is really something spiritual. I've had an open invitation for a very long time because I've had those people that are supposedly researchers and that they're boots on ground and all this stuff. You know, but they have to go travel like with four or five, six people. I've done all this by myself. Uh, the things that I'm talking about, the results, the evidence that I got is what I've done by myself. But at the same time, I've taken people that didn't believe all what I'm saying into these areas, and they've gotten spiritually attacked by this unseen force. They've actually gotten their their energy their energy drained, right? They've gotten their energy drained in these areas where I have to carry them out of the out of the wood line because they're not prepared spiritually. You know, there's a lot of people that are supposedly boots on ground, but they're not prepared to them spiritually. And they wouldn't know what to do spiritually, you know, because anybody can put uh, any kind of oil and uh, olive oil. Uh, they can they can uh, burn. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I got I got some right here. Sage. They can burn sage. They can uh, place holy water. But if they they have a spiritual opening, right? Those things that they're doing are meaningless, you know. Uh, or if they have Somewhere within them, uh, some anger or hatred, right? Or every word that comes out of their mouth is a bad word. That's an opening that no matter what you do, right? Spiritually, uh, it's still going to be an opening there. See, uh, right here, uh, I know whoever wasn't here, but this is all my minerals that I have back here. I, I want to show them to you all real quick again, one more time. Where you want to didn't get a view of them? I have a collection of minerals. This one, uh, I have a collection of minerals, brothers and sisters. Spiritual Abe. Look at this pretty piece right here. Down here, I have uh, two boxes that I haven't even opened up. So I have a big collection of minerals. Uh, that I've been collecting 
there for a while now. Look at this beautiful piece right there. Let me move this, this chair out of the way. Look at that, brothers and sisters. Some geodes. Smoky quartz. Same thing over here. I got all kinds of beauties. Got some with rainbows. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're clean. I got uh, so many uh, beauties here. Look at that. It's a lot of spheres here. And uh, geodes. I'm just sharing it with y'all. Maybe one day uh, I'll be able to take a closer look at them. Show them closer. <clears throat> well, that's where I'm making my life in here. Where I feel safe. Uh, there's there's uh, minerals in here that protect me spiritually. You know, my house is being protected spiritually. Even though I bless it and all that, I always have backup protection. There's minerals. There's certain minerals that protect you from negative energies. Like, uh, for example, black obsidian. Citrine, smoky quartz, uh, rose quartz, uh, so many minerals uh, that protect you from negative energies. Like I said, I was fighting spiritually, so when you're fighting spiritually, you got to find all the spiritual armor that you can. And minerals is part of the spiritual armor. But the number one out of all the armors is having the personal relationship with the Heavenly Father because He's the ultimate. The ultimate uh, protector is the Heavenly Father. Uh, yes, I haven't had no activity happening here at all. Like I was having uh, at my house of where I used to live in uh, in Killeen, Texas, at Elms Grove. I mean, that house, I uh, I, pay, I finished paying it off, but I let it go. It got it got overrun by that uh, unseen. Uh, through that spiritual battle, it went through a lot. It, it went through, I mean, I was fighting spiritually around the house. I don't know how many times I played uh, salt around the house just to protect it. Yes, I have all kinds of minerals, bro uh, uh, brothers and sisters, or sisters, whoever's here viewing. Uh, like I said, my, my, my buddy Carlito is going live. Uh, Yes, I like bringing the spiritual aspect out of it. You know, like I said, I know about the researchers that that want you to think that they're real and stuff like that. I know about them, and I know they probably might not like what I have to say, but I'm just being real about it. You know, like I literally fought fought this this being spiritually. Uh, got attacked physically. I got pictures. I, I'm gonna play some pictures. As a matter of fact, when I finish this live feed. I'm going to play some pictures of when I got physically attacked by the unseen force. What I mean is by these beings, not in, 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 in the flesh form, but in spirit form where you can't see them. Where you can't see them. I have pictures of where I got attacked by them in that nature. You know, when people say that some people are possessed and uh, sometimes scratches come out of nowhere or thin air or bite marks come out of thin air. Well, in that manner, that's how I was fighting spiritually. I was getting spiritually attacked in that manner. Uh, some people call it a form of possession because it's, it's, it's fighting. It's about fighting for your soul, right? When somebody's being spiritually oppressed or being possessed, they're fighting for their literally fighting for their soul, right? So you have to fight spiritually. I'm going to place those pictures on spiritual encrypted encounters after uh, I'm done with this video. I just have to look for them. Like I said, my other kind of got a band, but I have the pictures on, on, on backup. But I'll put them up there so you can see what kind of damage I got when I was fighting spiritually against them. You know, some of them, one of them, one of the pictures, some of the pictures is when I got shoved off a cliff. Like, it literally shoved me off a cliff from behind. And I tumbled and I tumbled and I tumbled downward. Uh... Luckily, thank God, God was with me and his angels were around me to protect me. But, uh, you know, I got hurt. I was in crushes for two months. But the unseen spiritual war is real. 
Uh, that's why you have to protect yourself with the, uh, the armor of God at a daily basis. Uh, I guess the biggest thing, protection, is to always maintain a love foundation. Not to dwell on, 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 on negativity of what people say about you. Don't give them the power over you or anything over you. But no matter how somebody approaches you, right, how somebody approaches you, always use love like, like hey, God bless you, hey, uh, I love you, you know, to overcome them. Because sometimes, you know, it's not the, the, the person that is like that. It's the, the negative spirits that are around that's going in into people that he can use to come up against you in a, in a spiritual way. So don't hold a grudge or anger against nobody in any kind of way because that's, that's not good. So I always maintain a love foundation and overcome them with love. You know, that's why I always try to uh, tell everybody. But all those pictures and the stories that I'm talking to you is about what I went through spiritually there in Elms Grove. You know, I went through a lot there. There's just a little bit of, there's just a little bit of what I've, of what I've been through there. You know, I'm just, I'm just glad that y'all joined. You know, I didn't think I was going to get any viewers actually, you know, because, you know, I really... I go live all the time, and y'all noticed out of, out of the blue where I'm going walking. Sometimes I do that because when I'm when I'm in the move, it, 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 it flows. You know, whatever's coming is just going to flow. You know, and when it's truthful and it's from the heart, it's just going to flow and it's going to be be there and it's going to mean something for somebody. Uh, just like right now, you know, something told me to make this video, and, and I'm glad y'all joined me. Uh, like I said, uh, my friend Carlito, if y'all want to turn into something else. He's doing a live on, uh, on Cryptid and Paranormal. If you don't know who he is, you can join him. He starts at 8. Uh, I'll tell him I'm going to be there for a little bit because uh, my wife wants to go dancing. So I have to uh, get ready for that, uh, to go out to this dance. Uh, it's going to be a light band. It's more like ballroom dancing. You know, I know, I know about y'all, but ballroom dancing, it relaxes me. And it makes me feel like I'm floating in air. And it just brings peace, peace to my heart. So I like to do things that bring peace to my heart. And making contact with you, brothers and sisters, brings peace to my heart. Because I know I can feel the love, the spiritual love. I can feel it from y'all, you know, just like y'all can feel it from me to you. You know, and to me, that's what it is about, you know. But yes, I love to dance. And I better, better, let me see what time is it right now. Because I think the dance starts at 9. So I might have to let y'all go for right now. Uh, so I can get get uh, get ready. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll put some. Matter of fact, if I can get somebody to take a picture when I'm dancing out there, I'll place it. I might wear a cowboy hat today. You know, here in Texas, I might wear a cowboy hat. I'm not sure. See, I got a, a fresh haircut here. I I got a fresh haircut, even though I didn't know I was gonna do a live today, but I got one. Uh, but I might wear a hat. You know, and look a little bit cowboy. You know, be like. A, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love to dance. I, I can, I, I can two step. I can do. Every, I dance to everything. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, when it's within you and you, you have a love foundation. You're happy. You just let it go. You, know, you just go with the flow of your spirit. You know that, that's what it's about dancing. Just let, just go with the flow of your spirit. Whatever your spirit is telling you to do, uh, just go for it. But anyways. Love, light, and blessings to every single one of y'all for joining me. Uh, like I said, tune in to Carlito uh, on Paranormal. Uh, uh, Carlito, can you see? Uh, there you go. Uh, tune in to Carlito's Cryptid and Paranormal Kingdom. He's going live at 8 o'clock. I told him that I wanted to do live and talk spiritually, and I did that. Uh, listen to Carlito. He's a, he's a good he's a good guy. I've uh, been on his shows. And... Uh, he has a lot, he's very informative of a lot of things also. You know, whether people want to consider him flesh or spirit, uh, tune into him. It starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, where are you going to be on, Carlito? YouTube, right? Yeah, I used to dance even out there in the, in the field. People would get mad at me because I, I, I was always like, even though I was starting to see us, I was always happy. And I try to motivate people, so I'll do some crazy stuff, like I'll dance on top of the tank at like 10 o'clock when everybody's asleep, and I'll be like, Aye! you know, getting all hyped up, and people be like, shut the F up, Sergeant Sears. 
And, I, you know, I, I just try to keep people motivated, you know, to because, you know, when you're in the military and you're out there in the field training, it, it takes a lot of energy out of you. So I'll do some crazy stuff, guys, to keep people motivated, you know, keep that adrenaline rush going to, to accomplish a mission. That's the kind of person I am. And I'm the same way, same way like this spiritually. No difference. But whoever didn't view uh, this video, you can always uh, start it from the beginning when I finished uh, doing it. And I, I'm going to tell you what, guys. Carlito, I'm going to drink a couple for you tonight. I'm going to have some fun. Whoever is doing I'm going to do some dancing for y'all tonight. A little bit of showboating out there. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like Deion Sanders doing prime time dance out there. You know? Now, I love to dance, guys. That's the other side of me that y'all don't know. You got spiritual aid, star and see us, and you got the dancing with the star see us. <laughs> dancing with the star Abe. Because when I'm out there dancing with my darling, that's what it looks like. You know, it looks like we're dancing with the stars. Maybe I ought to go audition over there. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just playing, y'all. But anyways, love, light, and blessings to every single one of y'all and your families. I will keep, continue to keep everybody in prayer. And like always, always maintain love in your heart. Uh, everybody have a beautiful evening. Peace.